Good morning, everybody. I'll just give it a couple of minutes for everybody to join. And we'll just give it a couple more seconds for everybody to join. Okay. A uh, very good morning to everybody with us today. Uh, my name is Ghada Uthman and I'm the head of programs at the Pearl Initiative. It's my pleasure to welcome you, you to our workshop today, Emerging Female Leaders, Mentoring Talent Retention in partnership with Nama Women Advancement. Now, before I begin, uh, I'd like to start off by first introducing the Pearl Initiative. The Pearl Initiative is the Gulf region's leading independent nonprofit organization working to improve corporate accountability and transparency across the private sector. Family firms, MSMEs, philanthropic and nonprofit organizations in the Gulf region. The Pearl Initiative was established 10 years ago by regional business leaders and the UN Office for Partnerships. More recently, we are one of the few organizations in the Gulf region to receive special consultative status from the United Nations Economic and Social Council. The Pearl Initiative runs programs focusing on governance related matters, conducts regionally based research, convenes business leaders, government and civil society leaders, as well as students to discuss challenges and opportunities in implementing best practices in the workforce. We also run workshops and trainings to support business professionals as they take the lead in implementing corporate governance, accountability and transparency practices in their organizations. Through Pearl Initiative's Diversity in Business Leadership Program and our Women at Work series, we're collaborating with NAMA Women in Advancement to convene professionals and discuss how mentoring benefits female leaders and how we can retain, retain female talent in the workplace. While women are increasingly taking on senior leadership positions worldwide, there's, a, there's still, well, we're still seeing a lack of females in leadership positions. The panel discussion today will highlight the importance of structured mentorship programs to prepare women for leadership positions and how they're a key aspect of career planning and professional development and how they go hand in hand with an inclusive work culture for women. The panel discussion will highlight the importance of addressing the role of mentorship for women in senior leadership and the necessity of retaining talent as part of a company's corporate governance approach to ensure business growth and sustainability. The session will also highlight how successful businesses put in place specific gender-focused mentoring and talent retention frameworks to ensure success and improve governance and accountability in the workplace. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our moderator for today's session, Zahra Tahir. Zahra Tahir is the Managing Director at Finmark Communications. She has a wide range of experience and holds a number of senior leadership positions across the Gulf. Zahra has an in-depth knowledge and, and skills in female mentoring, mentoring and talent retention, and she'll be sharing her insights on how, she, how this has benefited female leaders across the region. With that, I'll hand over to Zahra to tell us a bit more about herself and uh, introduce today's panelists and discussion. Over to you, oh. Zahra. Sabah al-khair, Ghada. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the interesting introduction. 
Thank you for Pearl Initiative and NMA or NMA for Women Development. Um, I am a Bahraini, a very proud Bahraini. Um, I have studied engineering. I have worked in insurance, and then I went into public relation. I established my first business in 2002. And then in 2010, I established Fenmar Communications with my business partner, Leila Danish, with offices in London and Bahrain. And guess what? All my life, I always had role models and mentors. And I was always like, yes, I had many people who helped me in mentoring. Only it was in 2016, uh, where I was really introduced to a structured mentorship uh, platform. And my first uh, thing was like, why is there a structured mentorship? Everyone has a mentor. Why are they making a big deal out of it? Why it's really... And that mentorship platform was focusing on mentees being females. This was the reach. And this is where my journey with mentorship started. I became so passionate and I started believing in the importance of mentorship. So I am on the advisory board of uh, Reach Mentorship, which, was, which started in 2013 um, in DIFC. I was introduced to them in 2016. And since then, I became one of their ambassadors because it opened and it really introduced me to many new concepts. So we started the first mentorship, regional mentorship forum in Bahrain. This was at Fenmar Communications, focusing on men and women. And we ha always have a session focusing on females. And then last month, I did the second mentorship forum Middle East in Bahrain. We had regional, international uh, delegates, speakers, and it became really one of my passions. It's how, the way I give back. Um, so I am very pleased that today I am speaking with ladies from different backgrounds, different sectors, different experiences. So it's, it's very, very interesting for me to see how this session will go forward. But before introducing our panelists, I would like to launch a poll and I would like to see how our delegates or our virtual delegates look at uh, mentorship. So if uh, I, so this is the poll, how challenging is it to find an effective mentor who will lead to a positive experience? And you have a single choice. So you have one minute to fill this poll. I hope it's going well with everyone uh, filling it. So ladies, Sam, Edda, are you ladies also filling the poll? Because I'll be asking you the questions. So interesting, very challenging. I am one of those people who said very challenging, 50%, somewhat challenging, 50%. So nothing, not challenging or I don't know, which is interesting. So with this result, um, I would like to introduce our very, very interesting uh, panelists. I will start with Asi Walansari, the Vice President of Marketing Strategy at Mashraq Bank. And then we will have Samante Jayasundra, who is the founder and the CEO of Humana City. And we have Eda Chilchikan, Organization and Talent Development Director, Middle East, Turkey and Africa at GE Corporate. So ladies, I will start with you, Wolan. Can you please, in two minutes, introduce yourself and tell us what was your answer? Sure. First of all, thanks a lot, Zahra, uh, for hosting this and also got, of course, for the a kind introduction. And thanks a lot, everyone, for tuning in. Um, it's, it's a really good time for all of us to be part of this you know, session. Um, my answer is um, actually in line with the highest um, answer in the poll, which is somewhat challenging because I think I have um, experience in the past how it can be quite challenging, you know, not to just find a mentor, but to find a mentor that can actually guide you to get what you want and what you need at the particular moment of time. And of course, we're going to um, talk about that a bit further during our discussion, but you know, just to reveal a bit more of what I honestly feel about it. Um, a bit of an um, introduction about myself, of course, as I already mentioned, but I'm, I'm currently uh, leading marketing strategy 
uh, for the retail banking segments at Mashrek Bank in, in the UAE. So um, I manage the digital acquisition as well as business marketing for key products and I handle uh, you know, various teams uh, overseas um, and manage the um, other divisions as well. Um, and apart, so basically I have like over a decade of experience in the banking sector. And prior to that, I have experience in the advertising sector in the Middle East as well as Southeast Asia. So a bit of a combination of both. Um, uh, prior to that, I was working for, uh, prior to, prior to Mashrek, I was working for Emerson DB, also in the UAE. Um, and currently I am completing an executive MBA at London Business School, something exciting to do like apart from the uh, busy work life uh, where I receive a woman in leadership scholarship from Late Low Foundation, a uh, very good initiative, which basically focused uh, to get, uh, you know, more women in the board position. Um, and I'm also part of the board member of uh, LDS Women in Business Club. Um, and founder of uh, the uh, LDS Board Fellows Dubai program with the intention to match um, executive MBA students uh, in Dubai with um, some of the prestigious uh, NGOs uh, in the Middle East. So that's all from my side. Very impressive, very interesting indeed. Um, Eda, can you please answer the question and tell us more about yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Zahra, and uh, hello, everyone. First of all, I'm very pleased to be part of this great panel on this very important topic, and I would like to thank Pearl Initiative and Nama Women Advancement for organizing this great session. Uh, so my answer was also very challenging, similar to you, Zahra, uh, because in my personal experience, I also found it uh, challenging be because finding a right mentor, I think it starts with the really high self-awareness. You need to be aware of your development areas first, and then based on that, you need to match this uh, with the strong mentor that really match your criteria. So that's why I, I think it's not an easy task. Uh, this is my answer. Um, and as an introduction, uh, my current role is um, uh, being the head of talent for uh, GE for Middle East, Turkey and Africa region. Uh, I'm based in Dubai. Um, I have uh, 17 plus years of HR experience uh, with a focus on organization, talent development, executive assessment, cultural transformation, change management and succession planning. Uh, I have worked um, in several companies, starting with local companies in Turkey, uh, in consultancy, uh, and also multinational companies like Microsoft uh, before GE. Um, and within G in G healthcare and G corporate was mostly the uh, businesses I worked for. Um, and mostly the roles were like HR manager, HR leader, or uh, HR compliance, and uh, mostly leading the talent uh, initiatives. In all these roles, uh, inclusion and diversity has been a priority and continue to be a priority for us to build a world that works for everyone. Um, and in addition to all this um, uh, experience in the private sector, I also continued my PhD on organizational behavior that um, I'm also uh, currently responsible for university relations as well. So uh, also driving um, really a sustainable uh, career for females for, from the earlier stage. I think this is also important uh, to start, start uh, earlier in the career. So this is a brief about me. Very, very interesting. Uh, Sam, it would be interesting to hear your answer and of course to know more about you. Sure. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Zahra, and uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. Um, I would like to, again, uh, thank the Pearl Initiative as well as uh, Nama Women's Advancement for giving me an opportunity to be part of this panel. Thank you very much. Um, my name, as Zahra mentioned, um, is Sam Jasundara. I'm the founder and CEO of Humanosity. Um, I'm based in Canada, but I serve clients uh, in the GCC as well as North America. Um, before I became a business owner, um, my company specialized in diversity and inclusion. Um, we deliver training uh, on diversity and inclusion, training for especially Emirati graduates um, who was joining into the workplace. Um, covering things like unconscious bias, um, disability inclusion, inclusive language in the workplace, to name a few. But prior to starting my business, I was in the corporate world for about 23 plus years in HR. 
um, to be specific in the banking industry in the UAE. Um, so majority of my experience is around talent acquisition, um, diverse talent acquisition to be uh, exact, um, uh, digital and HR transformation, um, um, to name a few. So um, I'm a graduate from University of Leicester in HR management. I also hold a certificate in uh, diversity and inclusion from Cornell University. Diversity and inclusion is a great passion of mine and that's where I hope to help this panel discussion um, as well as going forward all the nonprofits. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Being in Canada, so I don't want to imagine the time difference, but this is very interesting and, and the, the, the weather. Um, so we will be having, we will be discussing three different themes. Um, and in the three different themes, we will have an interactive discussions. Please, our virtual participants, you have the Q&A, you can chat, you can send your questions. We agreed among ourselves as panelists to look into the questions, anything related, we will cover it. So let's start with our first theme, attracting and retaining female talents in the workplace. Um, the three of you ladies, including myself, we have gone through different experiences and we know that this, will, this is an interesting theme. How can businesses encourage females to apply for job opportunities, um, especially leadership positions? So sometimes you see a position for a CEO for a bank, you will see most of the CVs, as I was told by one of my HR uh, friends, 99% are males and maybe 1% um, is a female, although there are lots of female over there, but they just get scared. I'm not one of them. I'm definitely one of the 1% who will apply, but how can it be attractive for females to apply? Um, I was told by Pearl Initiative that the UN job application, they include a line on encouraging female applicants to apply. If I was a male, I would just say this is discrimination. So from your uh, <laughs> perspectives, uh, Edda, working mm -hmm. for a multinational, going through different experiences, what's your view on this thing and how can we encourage? Thank you, Zahar. I think this is a great question to really point out the uh, issues in reality on having more females in leadership positions, which is the fact. Um, however, when I ask this question to fa some females around me or in the organization, the response most I get is, why do we need to encourage women? Uh, I mean, this will be a natural path, right? Like, uh, regardless of the gender, and companies should prepare ideal conditions uh, to make this happen. But I, am, I know each company has a different journey on this regard. Um, each company's background and the legend uh, can be different on this uh, issue. Uh, however, we know that, as you pointed out, uh, globally, women make up 40% of the working population, but when it comes to uh, managerial positions, it is uh, only 34%. And even when you go to Fortune 500, it is only 2% of women reaching to CEO position. Uh, so this is a really very low uh, ratio. So we need to accept the fact. Um, gi given that uh, factual things, when you look at why this is uh, happening or why uh, we see more or less women applying really uh, leadership roles, mostly we see it is more about women's self-selection. And uh, some research uh, also shows that although career growth is a common priority for both genders, and they both want to invest uh, in their next role, um, especially one research on LinkedIn took my attention, which was a, a gender insight report, uh, really shows that while women and men explore opportunities similarly, there's a clear gap in how they apply to, jo apply to jobs. Uh, so the uh, number of jobs they reviewed is almost the same, but uh, women are 16% less likely to apply for a job after reviewing it. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, if they apply, they are 16% uh, more likely to uh, get hired after they apply. So when they apply, uh, they are more successful uh, in the process. Uh, however, we see that they feel um, that uh, if they meet the criteria 100%, then they have more tendency to apply. Whereas when we look at the male population, if they feel they are like fitting the criteria 60%, they go for it. So it shows some uh, sort of, uh, you know, behavioral um, kind of background uh, of why uh, maybe self-confidence or self-esteem women may need more support uh, on that area that as companies, we can really invest, um, uh, really identifying the root cause of uh, this. 
Um, I can, especially this was something we also uh, kind of observed at GE uh, with the Women Network team. Uh, we are really collaborating a lot with them. Um, and recently we, uh, for example, launched a program called CARE, uh, which is uh, career assistance and resource and empowerment uh, for women. Uh, we really encourage them to apply more. Uh, we uh, periodically, bi-weekly share uh, all our uh, roles in the Women Network community really to encourage them to see them, to make the roles more visible for them, and not just uh, looking at the uh, criteria like to meet 100%, but even if 50% they meet the criteria, we really want them to go through it and see the development areas. So I think the companies really uh, can flex uh, their criteria a bit and uh, really uh, put attention on unconscious bias, uh, not putting this kind of uh, advertisements that may prevent women to apply. Uh, these are like basic things, but I think it starts at the top. It's a cultural shift. Each company, I think, um, needs to go through this cultural shift and the mindset change first. I, since you said cultural, actually, I wanted to throw a question since the four of us, we are ladies, we come from different culture. In the Middle East culture, uh, the woman is much more responsible uh, for the children um, mm -hmm. it's not it's not like Europe or it's not like other countries and I'm speaking from experience uh, my husband is half European half Middle East but here uh, once you're a mom uh, once you're a wife you are other than your responsibilities at work you have to manage everything else uh, the kids activities the kids schooling follow up mm -hmm. so having all this on their shoulders uh, many of the female friends I have this is what is making them stop going further because they have to balance um, yes. having time. So I'm not sure again, if this is a challenge in your uh, sectors, but <laughs> this is one of the reasons what makes many ladies I know, they don't want to go just for the position and not giving it all because they have. Yes, so that's correct. Think, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, this is, these are like really main challenges we also see. So, and when you look at as we have higher ratios or with male decision makers in the higher positions, these are the people making the policies or uh, setting the stage for the working conditions, right? So uh, once we have more females in the leadership positions, I think these females also will lead to more change uh, with more flexible options, uh, which is all, which is already in place, I think, in most of the companies after COVID. Especially, uh, we know that after COVID, inequalities uh, may be deepened uh, further. Uh, but with that, more flexibility also coming to workplace. Uh, so that's why I think um, changing some policies like maternity leave or even uh, paternity leave, because it's not just about supporting women, supporting everyone on those matters. We know we have some employees, like their husbands help them uh, during their paternity leave. So it's uh, like a really mutual uh, support, family support to both sides. I think uh, male support is also important in such things, right? So for women uh, leadership. So we also try to really uh, create awareness uh, on the male population as well to support women. So I, I am guessing that these are some of the different ways your company has uh, taken strategies, the, the, the flexibility, the online um, mm -hmm. the different things. So these are some of the strategies you, um, you have applied. But I don't know, Sam, since you are an HR consultant, you've worked in UAE, you are now in Canada, you, you focus on that. Do you think um, or do you advise your clients with certain strategies to attract uh, women to apply for leadership positions? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, yes, you do. Um, and I think more and more um, from a diversity point of view, uh, gender balance um, point of view, organizations are more and more inclined to have uh, uh, gender representation across the organization. So there was a time, um, especially in, in, in the region, um, in, the, in, in the Gulf region, where women came into lower or, or junior level positions. Um, but I think now the representation of women in mid senior as well as board levels um, has become a priority. So organizations are really looking at um, how do we build that talent internally? How do we nurture that female talent internally? What are the tools uh, and certain initiatives, some Edda mentioned 
maternity leave, extended maternity leave, um, but also really extending um, things like mentorship programs, coaching programs are very important since we're in the topic of mentoring um, for females. I think um, I think most organizations in certain parts of the world haven't really gotten on the mentorship bandwagon yet. They do some level of coaching. Um, some organizations have informal, um, maybe mentorships, not formalized, structured mentorships. I think these are the changes that I see um, in the region, as well as other clients that I work in other parts of the world as well, in attracting as well as retaining that talent internally. Thank you, Sam. I think Bahraini women, um, because I'm talking from my perspective, we're different than the other GCC. We were lucky enough because education started here in the 30s, the first and the GCC, and we have an excellent family structure. So like my mother pushed all my sisters to go and reach to the leadership position and she was taking care of the kids. So this family support really helped the woman here to be courageous enough to apply and for leadership positions. And you mentioned something very important, Sam. Now is the role of mentorship. So now what we need over here is the right mentoring. And this leads me to my question to Wolan. Uh, which mentoring styles or forms are you familiar with that you have personally experienced and you felt it has changed you or didn't change you? Is it a formal one? Is it both? Is it a structured one? So it would be interesting to hear your views on that. Yeah, thank, thanks for that question, Zahra. Um, I, I don't want to give like a certain weight to a particular mentoring style because I have personally experienced various, and I think a combination of, of those various styles will benefit you as a mentee, and even from mentor's point of view, because I've been in, in both sides. So let me explain further. Um, so you have more of the formal version of mentorship, right? I mean, this is something that now we have seen more and more often in various organizations, of course, because they understand how diversity and inclusion is very, very important as part of the agenda, um, the diversity in the board um, uh, or leadership uh, forum. Uh, it helps to drive you know, a much more uh, successful business. So. All of those lead to you know, the change from the top, which means that when it comes to leadership or talent development program, it has, um, you know, uh, it gives a chance for uh, people who are selected as or shortlisted as part of the program to join and benefit from the mentorship. And this would be more of a formal version of the mentorship where normally you would get the chance to be matched with someone from a very senior position. And then of course you would need to set up like the agenda, um, the kind of like specific questions that you want to do related to your own development. And all of this will have to be recorded. So that is like how usually the, the formal version, and it can range from six to six months to even like close to two years from, from my experience in the current and previous organization. And there's also the semi-formal version as well, which I have experienced uh, at London Business School. So what does that mean? Like um, you can actually connect with people who probably, um, have gone to a similar experience like you, but you know they they have reached a much more senior level uh, in in their current position. So that can be between the alumni and the student, and where they can connect and and basically talk about their experiences. And the mentor can kind of like help the mentee to help them through the current journey what they they wanted to overcome. And I would. I would not negate at all the very, very informal version of mentorship. It can be like between myself and an ex-colleague who probably wanted to, you know, enter the sector where I'm in right now. And I'm probably in the right position to guide her how she can take forward the next steps or tap into the network. So I would, I would consider, you know, really tapping into the various forms uh, of, of mentorship. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Wolan. I think as we go forward in our discussion today, we will be speaking about uh, that more, the, the, the structured mentorship and not. 
There are a couple of questions in the chat bar. I'll go through them once we finish the first theme. Um, the third question, it's very, very interesting for me because I'm someone who I believe that all programs should be for men and women because I feel the way things are going, very soon we will have initiatives for men because women has been like focused on, um, I know many people don't like what I say, but this is how I see it. I always feel even my mentorship forum is targeting men and women. Um, the question is, what do you think should be the role of men in attracting and retaining female in businesses as both leaders and mentors? Um, as I said, um, I feel men and women should support each other, should mentor each other. Um, whether it's a man in a leadership position or a woman, they should look at ways and areas of career advi advancement for their employees, regardless of their gender. It will be very interesting that we reach to a day that I look at the form without looking if it's a man or a woman. I just look at the qualifications at, you know, um, it is going there. But from my, my experience, um, there is a program which I spoke about the REACH mentorship. Uh, mentees are all females, but mentors can be men and women. So men can see how they can uh, support women and guide them when it comes to mentoring to positions where women were not taking in the past because of cultural uh, obstacles. Uh, there are programs also to support women to be on boards. In our region, again, I will only be speaking about my region because I'm not that aware even if I read statistics, usually board members were 90% or more men. And then suddenly some companies wanted to provide the quota, let's have females on the board. This is something I'm against, I'm against quota. It's more about how to mentor females to see what is in them that they can serve on the board and how they can um, act on the board. And Farah Fustok, who is the lady who enlightened me to this mentorship, said something, men should be mentored how to accept women on board and how to accept women on leadership position. I love the way she looked at that. So this is my experience. Sam, what do you think the role of men should be when it comes to mentoring women or encouraging them to go into different leadership positions? Uh, um, thank you, Zahra. Um, so I think firstly, um, you know, organizations tend to, uh, or has, has had historically uh, the notion that all mentors should be men. Um, and majority of the time that has been the case. And I think from my perspective, um, first and foremost, um, like you, I think that men should really consider females as counterparts and equal, female counterparts are equal to them and really champion female talent development, representation across the organization and really build that talent um, pull uh, and the pipeline within the organization and see its benefits as well. Um, I think from a diversity uh, and, and ret diversity retention point of view, uh, really nurturing um, uh, women's talents internally and really men becoming role models as well um, is, is important um, as much as them um, having a, a level of empathy and understanding because women's needs, um, you know, like you mentioned, we all know that we juggle family um, uh, and, and work life balances differently uh, and really having that empathy and understanding when you're really having female leaders um, uh, in, in an organization. I'm a big supporter and a driver for, um, of having female mentors for female mentees. I think that doesn't happen uh, that much in most organizations. In the West, it has start, started to, to uh, really, really take place. But I think really having, we have great leaders, uh, female leaders in organizations that we're not really tapping into them becoming um, mentors. And I think the way forward, as much as men have done a great job in, in mentoring, I had a male as well as a female mentor in my career, um, having both is, is very advantageous, but I think more female mentors, mentoring females um, can also have really long-term benefits in my opinion. So that would be my, my take on that question, Zahra. 
very interesting. Um, I just want to tell Farah, Amanda, who sent us very interesting questions, and my very dear friend, Lamise from Egypt. We will come back to your questions, but after we finish our theme, so we have more time to interact, so we, after we cover everything else. I'll go to the second theme, a correlation between female mentoring and business success. Um, this is something very interesting. I'm sure many organizations, they didn't just suddenly decide to have mentorship unless they found that there is a business benefit out of it. That's what business is all about. Um, Wolan, can you just, um, I know you said it uh, when you were thinking about your mentorship experience, but when we come from a business perspective in terms of how did mentoring contribute to your career development and the business success? Because when companies invest to mentor for mentorship program, they want to see you being developed and they want to see some dollar sign increase. So how can you answer this question for us? Yeah, first of all, let, let me explain in a bit uh, when it comes to the psyche, right? Like when mentorship happens, there are two parties involved, the mentor as well as the mentee. And basically when they started um, connecting and the mentee started sharing the experiences, the challenges, what they're trying to overcome and reach. And the mentor will look at it from a more holistic per perspective, probably more of a top view that will help them to, to see things uh, from a zoom out version, not in, very into detail of what they're experiencing right now. Um, they started building the connection. And what that means is between them, uh, the mentor will start being invested in the mentee's development as well as success and what they're meant to achieve as the next steps, right? Of course, in the, in the setup of an organization that will be related to, you know, next step uh, when it comes to uh, growth, promotion, et cetera, whatever that they need to achieve. They become invested in that and they think they will feel that um, when the mentee becomes successful, it is also part of um, the support from the mentor as well. And vice versa, because the, the mentee would feel that, you know, all of these efforts are, um, you know, should not go to waste. It's something that they will feel more driven to, you know, really push um, and get uh, uh, the, the objectives uh, to, to be achieved. Right now, from from a broader perspective, the organization level, all of these things, if we can encourage more and more, of course, it will lead to more and more women to rise, not just to the mid level position, but also to the senior and more towards the board level position. And I have briefly mentioned in, in my previous answer that this will lead to better or greater diversity when it comes to um, giving the perspective, it will become much richer instead of like coming from the perspective of, you know, uh, people who are probably more or less similar in their, in their opinion, it will become more diverse. And this is something that we have seen changing, especially recently, not just in other, you know, in, in the, in, in specific sectors. I'm, I'm also talking about like banking sectors, which I think uh, in the past you would see that it's, it's not something which is which is quite common. Things are changing there as well. So I, I really think there's a high correlation there. And I think more and more companies are consciously making the right efforts when it comes to diversity and inclusion in order to reap the benefit, which is also beneficial for the whole business. Thank you, Wolan. I totally agree with you. And you mentioned the banking sector. I think the banking and the finance sector is really going more towards gender balance, more than the manufacturing and the industrial, where we can see the gap and we all know the reason for that. Um, uh, Edna, from your experience, again, working for a, a large multinational, from your personal perspective and from your current position. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think female mentoring and talent retention go hand in hand? Do you think when you apply, some people they say, yes, once we mentor them, they go to another company, they see other opportunities. <laughs> you, find yeah. you can retain them in the same company or you're just opening their horizon for bigger. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, actually, um, definitely for, I mean, especially at GI, I think in the region, we have a very strong foundation on female development. Um, I also agree such programs should be for uh, both females and males, but we also saw the benefits when you intentionally focus on uh, female development with the common challenges they all have that may hold them back uh, to go to the next level. Uh, we had uh, in the last couple of years, um, especially in the region, uh, we had several uh, female development programs we in which included really strong mentorship in it uh, as well. And we saw the benefit like we had a grow program for, um, for the females in their earlier states in their career, uh, where then we saw almost 70% promotion rates to the next level. So it's really uh, impacts the, positively the retention of this uh, population. And then when we uh, come to the middle stage or upper stage, uh, especially related to the first question as well, um, we saw some gap on the leadership positions. And even in the pipeline, you know, you see lack of uh, talent pool, right? Like if you have someone in the pipeline, then you may invest. So then we kind of worked on how we can strengthen this pipeline. Then we come up with this uh, Grow Plus uh, programs uh, in the past, with, which we really uh, run very successfully, where uh, females mentor each other or other uh, male population also supported them. We also had like executive leaders sponsor such programs. So this really helped, I think, to retain this uh, female talent. Uh, but of course, with the changes and everything, uh, I think, uh, especially uh, with this changing environment now it, we are most going on more individualistic needs right like for both females and males everybody has a different need and to your point uh, they, they have different family challenges etc uh, and not necessarily everybody would like to go each pet you may you know give them so they really need to find their own way uh, and that's why now we are more focusing on individual growth programs where we specifically uh, look at executive assessment, how we can assess these uh, females to really identify the development areas and how we can have a customized development plan uh, for these females. And mostly we try to kind of uh, assign them or help them to find the right mentor uh, for different needs. Like for example, if, they, if you want a female to be more assertive in the like a board meeting or like a, in a leadership meeting, we, uh, we maybe assign this person a male mentor who can kind of be a role model for more assertiveness. On the other hand, if the uh, female employee is going through some emotional challenges, then we try to assign a, a senior female leader who went through similar challenges years before. So this is like some customized approach we try to uh, apply on mentorship and this type of development programs. Uh, and there are some other uh, programs we apply with women network community. I think this community partnership is really important, like empower empower her program, uh, where we have uh, uh, some areas we address like um, personal branding, um, like how to get what you want in a discussion uh, or overcoming some um, challenges in the workplace. So these are the things uh, we uh, really apply. And also we uh, really will promote this I am remarkable sessions uh, that Google, you know, Ron, you may know this. Uh, this is also one of the uh, elements I think people really love it. Uh, so these are the things we try to encourage for the awareness. Uh, but this is, uh, of course, all part of a, the business and talent strategy. So definitely they are hand to hand. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Ladies, we have six minutes to cover our theme. So we go to the Q&A because it's very interesting in the chat what I'm seeing. So Sam, it's always good to give statistics and to give data. So we spoke about mentorship, retention of staff. Uh, from a business sustainability point of view, because at the end of the day, this is what really matters. What are the benefits of mentoring females? Economic profit uh, gain, maintaining a diversified uh, workforce. So if you can share your view with some statistics, it would, this would be very good for us. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Zara. Um, yes, and, and, and uh, benefits are many. Um, I think any successful mentoring program can really foster um, a, a culture of learning. So, so organizations can benefit from positive, inclusive culture because they really do foster 
cultures of learning and, and nurturing and growing talent within um, leadership diversity. I spoke about representation uh, of, of females within leadership levels. That can be a benefit. Um, mentoring programs actually have a huge benefit on knowledge sharing. And it's a low, really a low cost way to sort of let senior employees pass industry knowledge um, you know, organizational knowledge and how to navigate um, within the organization and, and also a little bit of wisdom that they've gained through uh, their long journey um, to younger employees as well. Uh, employee satisfaction, morale, um, engagement uh, will all lead to retention by having um, uh, mentorship programs. Um, and, and another component would be talent acquisition. Uh, a lot of, especially um, uh, young talent coming into the organization really see mentoring programs as an attractive perk for, and really see that, that um, mentoring programs um, uh, when it comes to talent acquisition stage can really be beneficial for career growth, et cetera. Some generic statistics I would like to highlight, and these are probably more North American statistics, but uh, nevertheless, very, very uh, important. Um, there was a study done back in 2019, um, Fortune 500 companies in the US, 71% of those companies had a formalized mentoring program. Um, of which 89% uh, of mentees um, actually, were, and these are men, uh, male and female mentees, went on to become mentors um, for other, uh, the, you know, other mentors to other uh, junior members within organizations, either their existing organizations or others. 79% um, of millennials actually saw mentoring as a crucial part for their career success within an organization. Um, one uh, highlight uh, I have here is um, women tend to have, you know, ha were more likely to have a mentor than men. And it was a, a sort of a 54 to 48 percentage, which I thought was interesting. So women were given more uh, mentors, but predominantly male mentors given to females. 67% um, of businesses reported an increased productivity and 55% of businesses um, uh, felt that uh, they had had a positive impact uh, on their profit margins by having a structured, robust mentorship program within their organization. So this is just a little bit of statistics um, from, uh, from advantages to the organization. Imagine. Very, very interesting statistics. I think statistics like this, updated ones, really will help companies to think to focus more on mentorship programs. We have five, four minutes, but it's only two minutes. I made it four minutes for our last theme. Uh, challenges of female mentorship and talent retention. I think, again, challenges are for both men and female, male and female uh, mentorship because it's about commitment of time. Whether it's the mentor or the mentee, it's the commitment and it's the continuity. It's not a one one time mentoring. Many of the mentorship programs go for one year and some of them just extend. So from your experiences like um, Eda, um, what are the challenges that mentoring and retention initiatives for females are? Mm -hmm. um, just yeah. give us Thank you, Zahra. Yeah, um, I think the main challenge is uh, what we, uh, what I'm hearing, especially this mentorship relation, uh, mostly don't complete the full duration. Some people quit uh, in the middle or they don't follow up uh, or they are not sure about the objective. Um, they're just meeting without setting a clear objective uh, of what they expect from this mentorship relationship. And uh, again, coming back to the poll question, I think the most challenging piece is really finding the right person, right? Like uh, who is the uh, right person that may match uh, my uh, needs? Uh, so this is the, I think, uh, clear things. Recently we see like talent marketplace type of um, initiatives in big uh, companies also that I'm following this, which uh, creates an environment like a skill inventory, like how we can have the skill inventory in the company so that we can match the right skills with the right needs uh, in the organization and the people. So hopefully when we have 
this artificial intelligence technology and uh, when this supports, I think we can address uh, this matching <laughs> piece hopefully with technology. Um, but in reality, I think uh, with more network and exploring more people, this may help us uh, to find the uh, right people and with the right objective. Um, we can I would like to share, challenges. Yeah. I think you mentioned, yeah. I would like, because the second question is, can you share, share insights on connect, connecting female mentors to mentee? Um, what made me interested in the REACH platform um, you just go, you, you have to fill a form. It takes around 20 to 25 minutes. The first time I filled the form, I was like, oh my God, they're asking me such deep questions. And it was so interesting when I was men uh, matched to a mentee. And in my first meeting with, the, with my first mentee, I was amazed how much similarities we had in personalities and career path. And the same thing happened when I was matched with my second mentee and my third mentee. So definitely, I think these platforms like the REACH platform, um, I'm not aware of other uh, platforms, but REACH is focusing on uh, female mentees. The way you go and you enter and you enter your details, definitely the algorithm put you with the right uh, mentor and mentee. The challenge is how committed they are because I had successful mm -hmm. experiences and I had very um, bad experiences where the mentee is not taking the time Time is money, you know, and you yeah. don't want to be tough on them because you're like the one who's advising them. So mm -hmm. I found it very interesting that yes, platform algorithms, although I'm not as technology savvy, they are <laughs> really interesting. Networking is very important, but it's not always the right way to get the right uh, match. And one time I had a, a panel discussion. I love what that guy says from Rob. Rob, he's an HR consultant. <sighs> one of the uh, companies, he said, it's like marriage matching. <laughs> you need to find the right elements and you need to find the right uh, way for it to go forward. So I, I totally agree um, with him. Um, I don't know, Sam, do you want to um, talk anything about like, give your views on the challenges of uh, retaining and having the right mentorship relationship? Yeah, I'm, I'm also conscious of time, so I'm going to be really, really quick. Um, I, I think setting um, realistic expectations by all parties um, is really important um, and, and can really cause um, unnecessary uh, burdens if it's not realistically set. Um, so organizations setting realistic expectations uh, for the mentee as well as the, uh, the mentor is important and what the organization expects in return as well, especially when you're doing a structured program. Um, over dependency can be a, a, another one. Mentees can overly de be dependent on the mentor. That can also create that time and energy commitments as well. Um, and I think uh, one of the panelists did really highlight um, the, the, the matching of the correct partnership. Um, so ineffective mentoring partnerships can uh, really be challenging if uh, if that goes astray and, and not really um, matched uh, properly, like you highlighted your algorithm. Uh, but also, when you don't have an algorithm, when you do when you do it um, uh, without a, without a system, uh, it yeah. really needs to be matched effectively. Good. Well, and I will skip the last question for you because. There are interesting questions here, and we'll go into that as our ending question. Um, um, Amanda, I think I answered your question about mentorship programs. You can Google Reach, and there is another one called Qudwa. I will write them in the chat. Uh, Farah Nasif asked a very interesting question. In my mentorship forum, which I hold every year, we always try to focus on that, the difference between coaching and mentoring. And I think, Samantha, you are our HR expert in this uh, session. So if in one minute you need to give them what's the difference between mentorship and coaching, please go ahead. I'm going to be really quick. Um, coaching is uh, more of an action oriented, um, um, is, is more action oriented than mentoring. Mentoring is a long term partnership. Usually you have with someone senior within the organization so they can actually show you the ropes, uh, take you through the journey that they have gone before you. Um, so it's a long term partnership. It has to be matched effectively. Um, mentorship is more, more task oriented rather than 
action oriented. Coaches can be external. They can come in for one session of coaching, two sessions of coaching and go away and then let HR monitor uh, the, the effectiveness of the employee. So in a nutshell, and I'm being really quick, I, would, I can go on uh, uh, for forever on the, the difference between coaching and mentoring. But these are the really the key components uh, of, of coaching and mentoring. And mentoring can be very, very structured. It has to be a structured program, although you have informal and formal mentoring um, sh should be really structured. So the task orientation is really idea sharing, knowledge sharing process, whereas coaching is, is, isn't knowledge sharing as such. I think coaching, somebody should be certified to coach you, but you don't have to be certified to mentor. And you Absolutely. have to be a coach to be coached, but a mentor is someone who is volunteering his or her time to support you. And someone um, who's senior than you. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, so just um, COVID, Hanan Abbas is saying COVID uncovered the huge gap and vulnerability of women and youth. What can we do to bridge the gap in a well-structured mentorship platform? I just want to say that COVID gave mentorship a perfect opportunity because in the past it was very difficult to have time to go and meet the person but with reach for example virtual mentorship you don't have to have a mentor who's in the same country you have you can have it in both like i i have a mentee who's in lebanon with all this COVID. so this is my perspective i don't know if edda or Wolan would like to yeah i made it from g uh, with this challenge actually uh, especially with university students at this question also ask for youth uh, we did a career mentorship program for uh, university students and we matched them with G, uh, senior G leaders and they went through a three months uh, career mentorship program during COVID time because we also had limited opportunity for internship. Uh, so we wanted to do something different to go give back to the society. So this was very effective one. We would like to continue. And for Women with Women Network uh, team, we are also focusing more on uh, mentorship. We continue our initiatives with uh, with this uh, employee resource groups. Excellent. Walan, would you like to share your views on this? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the ladies uh, already answered that. I, I don't have uh, more to add. Uh, I think we can go on to the next question. Okay, uh, the next question is from Hanan Abbas as well. We need to create in our region career offices, advisors, council that can assess women before taking a job. If you're referring to our region as the Gulf, I think we're doing it so much uh, more than many other regions. I think there is a lot of investment from government, semi-government, the corporates. Um, I'm also, as an entrepreneur, I'm on organizations uh, like the EO. Uh, there is career guidance for entrepreneurs. So Hanan, I just want you to Google and maybe visit the mentorship forum and you will see many of these initiatives. Lemis, you said that in Egypt, uh, the central uh, bank said that two women should be on the board. I am against quota. I think because <laughs> once you put this, especially in our region, they will go and find who is the daughter, is who, who is well connected. She has to be on the board. I think women or men should reach wherever they are with the right mentoring, right coaching, and right qualification. Um, these are the questions I am seeing. I don't know if Farah Nasif saying thank you. If there is time, can you please tell us how an organization can build an effective mentorship program? Um, again, I will give you one minute, Sam, and one minute, Eda, because both of you are involved in this more than Wala and myself. Wala and myself. Uh, if I'll go, I'll go first. Um, so. Uh, uh, building a mentorship program, I think you really um, need to have a couple of things in mind. Um, you uh, need to have uh, identified the right mentors um, and have their commitment um, in doing mentorship uh, uh, long term because it is a long term uh, program. Uh, you also really need to have the strategy and what is the organizational outcome that they expect from a mentorship program that needs to be laid out. Um, clearly, expectations um, from the mentor and the mentee has to be really defined clearly. Um, I would also even recommend if I were to do a, a, a mentorship program for an organization, really training the mentors as well, training and guiding and coaching them um, as to structurally how to go about mentorship. I, I think that's how 
uh, uh, a mentorship program can be effective. You really need to then have metrics to measure the effectiveness of, um, of, of your mentorship program. Without metrics, you really want to know whether you are really in, a, in, in the success mode. So really having metrics such as um, development of, uh, of the uh, mentees, have they moved on to, um, uh, to take on leadership uh, programs, have they moved on to take on maybe a, um, a, 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 a special project, for instance. So those things you really should uh, should be measured. Sorry, Ada, I took uh, mm -hmm. a bit more than I wanted. Uh, Please go ahead. No problem. I, it's a great answer. Uh, actually, uh, the uh, objectives and expectations clearly should be defined uh, definitely, and it should be part of the organizational culture. I think it should it shouldn't be like a one time program. I believe it should be part of ongoing uh, development journey that employees uh, should pick as an option whenever they want uh, in their development plan. So I think we need to enable individuals and leaders to make it happen uh, as a part of culture um, and make it a journey. Just very quickly, in Reach Mentorship, when you're signed, when you sign to be a mentor and a mentee, it's a compulsory thing that you attend a training session and you have to sit with a coach. So we make sure that this mentorship program is going well. As a, a closing um, thing, all of you ladies, I need two things from you. What is the future of mentorship for female? And are you committing to register with either Reach or Qudwa or any platform? Plus the same thing goes for our uh, virtual delegates. I think Aya had already put in the chat bar about Reach, about Qudwa. You have the opportunity now to register without paying anything. It's all nonprofit organizations. So I will start with you, Willen. Tell me what's the future of female mentorship and what are you committing to to support other females? Yeah, um, I think the future of the future of mentorship is, I mean, we, we touch upon this. Uh, I think you mentioned it also, Zahra. I think it's tech enabled. It is pretty much in line with what the world is experiencing. And it's uh, obviously as, um, pushed further by uh, the pandemic, right? Um, and I think it is good in a way because um, you can look at it two ways. One is there's the you know more formal version where you have these platforms that will enable you to match uh, you with the right mentor, right? But again, there's or, there are already other platforms out there which allow you to connect with other people. Say LinkedIn, you know, what is stopping you from reaching someone who you think that uh, can give you the right advice, considering she must have done things that you know you wanted to uh, reach in, in your next years uh, ahead. You can connect with that person through your common connection or you know try to reach out. It is much, much easier now to go for, I would say, a flash mentoring session, which is like probably more of like 15, 20 minutes virtual coffee, rather than asking the person to commit with the commute and then meeting you for coffee, et cetera. So, we, I think we really have to benefit you know, more of this and try to, again, look at the various mentorship platforms, whether it's formal or non-formal, formal, that can help you to reach where you want to be. I, I think this is, this is very important. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going mean, to, I have a lot more to say, but I, I will leave it to the ladies. And of course, from my side, uh, because um, I think this is very, very important. I will for sure sign up for for you know the platform. I will get in touch with Zahra after this. <laughs> Thank you, Eda. Yes, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think we will see more of this kind of mentorship programs internally and externally. And I think externally, especially these uh, social platforms and networks, um, will be uh, higher uh, than today. Uh, that we will see more network happening um, and maybe more quick. Uh, uh, mentorship like then long term we will we may have multiple mentors on different topics and definitely i'm committed to sign up this uh, reach and could work platform uh, and hopefully uh, wishing to mentee mentor someone and i can have another mentor myself for my development as well so i committed for for both thank you Ada sam I'll be really quick um, female mentorship has to be clubbed into uh, the overall organizational um uh, strategy and not um, uh, a separate piece. 
Uh, that's number one. I think that's how the organization should, should the future of mentorship should be. Um, and again, my commitment, I'm happy to be a mentor for another female. I'm happy to sign up uh, to any of the platforms um, as well. So that's my commitment. That's excellent. I would also like to invite everyone to join a hybrid event, The Power of Education on Gender Balance. Uh, I think it's in the chat bar. Thank you very much, uh, Ghada and Perl Initiative. This was very eye-opener for me, interesting. <coughs> I commit, I'm already on reach, but I commit that if Perl Initiative wants to do anything further with mentorship, you can consider Finmark Communications and the Mentorship Forum. Uh, one of the tools you can use, happy to talk about different topics like speed mentoring, many other things. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our audience, first of all, uh, for uh, attending. Uh, but a huge thank you to all of our panelists and uh, Zahra, our moderator. Thank you very much. Uh, this was a much needed discussion. And uh, we hope to continue. We hope to we hope to learn from this and continue the good work. So thank you, everybody, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.